I don't know why haters be telling me to mind my business when they're out here not minding theirs. Shut your mouth and enjoy the tea. We all know you're here for it, sis. You have logo, vision over. You have been one of less than a mugosi. Oh, wami, oh, wami. doing it so go i'm nature Zolo, aka miss fear for coloring back for entertainment if it's the first time joining me almost definitely welcome please do make sure that you subscribe and obviously hit the bell i absolutely love it don't forget to follow me on instagram it said boldly oh i mean now my ninjas before we get into this video let's go ahead and check the shout out my name is clantus and i own a youtube channel called the real clantus tutorials on my youtube channel i teach all things youtube all things making money on youtube if you are interested in growing your youtube channel as well as making money on youtube then definitely this will be your type of content that you will appreciate on my channel so if you want to join the clan and grow your youtube channel then subscribe to my youtube channel and make sure to click the notification bell so that you do not miss out on any of my uploads so i look forward in seeing you there ninjas don't forget to obviously Go and subscribe to ninja's channel support each other please um the link will be in the description box down below i also have tiktok now ninjas the link will also be in the description box down below i'm sure there will also be a handle somewhere here and for those that have been asking about the t-shirts or if you want shout outs or if you want consultations please just make sure that you send your whatsapp to the numbers that are on your screen right now and um you basically get help so yes Anyway, ninjas, um, again, before we get into this video, if you're someone that hates me talking about my personal life, <laughs> be go, uh, you know, click off this video. You're not going to enjoy it. That's the first thing. The second thing that I would like to say is that um, it, with these videos, you guys, my intention when it comes to these videos is not to bash anyone. It's not to make people look at someone in a bad way or anything like that. Um, this is the truth. Like, I'm not lying to you guys about anything. I've not lied to you guys about it, anything. Everything I've told you, like, has been the truth. And so, you know, like, this is real life. I did receive a message from someone close to me um, that I know, like, personally. And she was like, girl, like, I love your videos. You know, I'm learning a lot. You know, it's a newlywed. Um, there's a st certain stuff that you just don't see, you know, and this and that. And... I just felt it's helping um, more than hurting. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue with these videos because I told myself I'm not going to do it anymore. However, ninjas, I do have the join button now on my channel where you guys can basically support my channel. It starts from as little as 30 rands um, per month. It basically just helps my channel in terms of it gives me sort of like a peace of mind you guys need to understand that as a youtuber you don't have a basic salary so if you guys are obviously supporting and helping me that will work as sort of like my basic salary if you guys understand which obviously would give me more freedom to just create more you know i don't know quality content for you guys so basically yeah it will help me a lot. I will do an explanation and basically show some of you that may not understand, like, what is it you need to do? Google is very safe. So even when you're putting your banking details, <coughs> sorry, it's not Corona. <laughs> um, so even when you're putting your banking details, please understand that everything is going to be safe. Okay. Anyway, ninjas, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Today's video is going to be a story time or basically telling you guys how I saved money and made sure that I got out of my uh, newly toxic marriage. Now, when I talk to you guys, I'm not going to only just talk about money just because I feel like the money saving and the money aspect was like the easier part, the emotional part of it i feel like was more draining and unfortunately when you're emotionally not okay <clears throat> it also kind of affects obviously like your mind and how you think and everything like that so i'll give you guys sort of like a story and just walk you through just to understand so that if maybe you're in the same situation or similar situation then there's certain tricks that maybe you can be able to take and obviously use now today obviously we're going to be talking about shmanish bubble shmoney 
Um, I'm not gonna be able to give you obviously the full figures on oh this is how much I make, this is how much I made exactly how much did i save a month but i'll give you guys sort of like rough estimates okay that's the first thing the second thing is that um when we're talking about money and you're someone that is like how do i save money how do i leave this toxic marriage or this toxic situation that i'm in unfortunately you can't do that if you don't have an income and this is something that is very very important I think that I've said this many times. I remember there was a year when my father basically set me down and he was like my child. Um, I know that, you know, you're with your husband. I know that you guys love each other. However, I don't think that it's advised that you just sit whilst he works and he makes the money. Um, you also need to stand on your own two feet and you need to basically make your own money and i remember just telling my dad like dad my husband can never change because that's what my father had said it was like men change i was like mm, mr b can never change you just don't know the kind of love me and mr b share you know those kind of stuff and well daddy you were right you know and so i'm glad that obviously when it all happened i was at a point where i was financially stable and so the first thing i'll tell you is that I don't care if you're married. I don't care if you're happily married. I don't care what's happening. Be someone that can that is financially independent. And when I say financially independent, I don't mean that you're someone that doesn't receive gifts from your husband or your love or you know does not allow their husband to do stuff for them. Just be someone that if Lord forbid your husband dies or your husband decides he doesn't want you anymore, you are not going to go to begging. You understand what I'm saying? Like, be someone that will have something that is of your own, and you'll be able to sustain that, and you'll be able to work. So if you don't have any qualifications, start, go to school, do that. You know, start acquiring qualifications and if you have qualifications but you're not getting a job start something start a business you know start selling zimbas like start as small as you possibly can use what you have to get to where you want to be and i know that for some people they're going to feel like oh i can never do that i can never go to people's houses and ask to wash their clothes i can never you know work in someone's house guys i used to cook pub by the side of the road um there's a lot of stuff that i've done job wise that would give money and i was like you know when you're at a point of desperation or at a point where you don't have money you honestly cannot afford to be picky so that's just an advice that i'd give you you know um i feel like most of us start small um and so if you also started small with something you can be able to do it just make sure that you actually have um your own income and also i'll give advice to those ladies who are married to men that tell them that i don't want a wife that works i want you at home with the kids you know this and this and that and there are some of you that obviously will look at that as oh my gosh he's so loving he's so caring uh sometimes but at most times he's not loving or caring or whatever he's crippling um you know it's making sure that you know what fully abled as you are is rendering you useless uh, because of now you fully have to depend on him for everything um, which means that even whenever like you know tough situations come finances are going to play a huge role in um you know how you are going to obviously take any action and stuff like that so i just want some of you to be very careful when it comes to that sometimes not because somebody loves you sometimes just because they want to cripple you and i'd give you guys sort of like a tip if you are married to a husband that is like i don't want my wife working i want my wife at home that's not wrong if he can open a business for you that is under your name like you can legit sit down and ask him there to say that okay you don't want me to get a job i'm not going to work however open a business for me that i'm going to run i can run from home i can do this i can do that but refuse to just be someone that sits home and does not have a source of income that's very dangerous that's something that i can never ever advise anyone so if i can advise my own mother's kids to just be somebody that is just a housewife that sits home and does nothing 
then I feel like it would be very unfair for me to come out here and be like, oh guys, yeah, you can do that. Do you understand? Hey, oh, I'm Inichwa Zoru here and I have some great news. If you have a YouTube channel or a business and you would like to get some affordable advertisement, I offer those services. Follow the instructions on your screen right now and say hello to some new traffic. Now let's get back to the video. So basically, I found out that my ex-husband was cheating on me back in April last year. And um, I'd say I made the full food decision that I was actually leaving um, in June. Now, in April, when I found out we had the huge fight, I did throw him out and then he came back. And then I threw him up a second time. But when I threw him out the second time, it was in um, May. And then in May, that was when I realized that, oh my goodness, like I wasn't able to cope. Um, it was really bad, you guys. And so I was like, I'm going to go and fetch him. Um, you know, so I basically like, you know, we, we connected, we started talking. Um, and then, you know, he came home. Now, the second time that he came home, I knew that I, I'm, I'm definitely like going to start preparing myself to leave. However, you guys know, you've been with someone for a long time. And after they cheat, like they obviously do try to like mend things. And the second time that he came home, as I said, he was really like into like, let's fix our marriage. I love you. I'm really sorry about everything. I've now learned. I've now seen. But honestly, for me, you guys, it was just really, really difficult. When he came home the first time, that was when we actually went. I can't remember. I think it was the first time we did go for marriage counseling. It just didn't work. So it's not like, you know, which, uh, it was just a an easy thing, a quick, quick thing. No, did see like, you know, people that could help us. But I was just unable to um, forgive what had happened. So basically, I'd say that in June, that was when I made the full decision, like, okay, I'm going to leave. And so I kind of gave myself a six months plan. I knew that when we went to 2021, I wanted to be in Joburg. Like I wanted to have moved back to Gauteng. Um, and so my goal was that I need to move out of this place and actually get my own place and it has to be in Joburg. Now, I'm someone that the time that we were in Joburg, you guys were financially struggling so much. And at that time, like I had a husband. And so there was a huge part of me that was very scared. Um very very scared and very very intimidated by how they because for me i was like oh my gosh things here are so expensive the last time i was here like things were really bad financially and i had someone that was helping me which was obviously a husband and now i'm gonna come back this side i'm gonna be alone um and everything financially is going to be like on my shoulders you know being a youtuber you guys like is something that can be very scary in terms of you don't have a basic salary and so you don't even know how much you're going to make and you know things go up and down the pandemic there's a lot of factors so it was something that you guys was really honestly very scary but i was like i need to just start planning on what is it am i going to need and um, how can i get the stuff that i actually need now for some of you that do not know when i was still married my bank card used to stay with my ex-husband the reason why it used to do that is because i was making more money and i saw that he used to have sort of like an inferior complex when it came to that so i decided that giving him my bank card maybe will make him feel like a man even though i'm working for the money Mm, so you know i was not really in possession of my bank card so i wouldn't do anything um without him basically knowing if i wanted to transfer money and use it for something i'd have to transfer it from my capitec to his capitec and then um i'd use his card because i always had his card so um the first thing that i obviously asked for was for my card back so that now he's not going to monitor like okay this is how much i spent this is how much i made and stuff like that you understand so that was the first thing that i did i took back my card the second thing that i actually did was that um i basically made sure that you know what from now on we are going to just split the bills someone he's going to pay some stuff i'm going to pay some stuff um, at first, I basically said he's man of the house. He has to pay for everything. But his salary was not going to, obviously, you know, cope. So I had to also chip in. 
And so, you know, obviously now it was like he pays for some stuff, I pay for some stuff, and then whatever money everyone has left from their salary belongs to them. They will see what they do. Now, with that, I knew that obviously if I'm going to work hard, however much money I make, I'm going to just pay the portion of the bills that I'm supposed to pay, and then the rest of the money is obviously going to be in my account so I can be able to start saving. Now, the third thing that I did was that when we were still married and everything was fine, every single month, I used to show him this is how much I'm going to get paid. So basically with YouTube, they kind of round up and give you like how much exactly you're going to get paid around the 10th or 11th. It depends on the month. And so I always used to show him like this is how much I'm going to get paid. And then we would basically start planning. So since obviously now everyone was going to be going their own way, I was no longer telling him how much I was getting paid. Um, and so, you know, like that was it. Now I did that obviously you guys, um, because I didn't really want him to see that I had now started to save a, a chunk of money because I had not told him yet that my plan was leaving. He thought that we were still together. Things are just changing now because of if I'm not okay, you know, those kind of stuff. The other thing again that I knew I was going to need was obviously a car. So, you know, we were driving a Peugeot. The Peugeot that we were driving, you guys, used to give us some problems. So it was not really a reliable car. Um, and I didn't want to come to Jove with a car that was not reliable. So I knew that we were going to definitely have to get a car for me. So, you know, I basically set him down and I asked him to say that, I think it's time we'll get a second car. Number one, the Peugeot is giving us a problem. And other than that, it will be proper for us to just have two cars so that I can also have the freedom of going anywhere if I want to go out. He wasn't difficult at all, you guys. Basically, I agreed. And then we came to Joburg. We looked for a car. And that was when we got the Kia Cerato. So when we got the Kia Cerato, you guys, obviously, um, he wanted it to be under his name. So basically, he wanted the papers to like the car for the car to be under his name but the money was coming from my account so i was like from his account i think that like he only added about ten thousand or fifteen thousand no it wasn't fifteen thousand i don't think it was even up to ten thousand i think it was about six thousand rands or something i can't remember so <clears throat> I was like, no, um, I want the car to be under my name because, you know, I obviously knew why. Um, and I didn't fight, you know, I, I was just like coming up with points like, baby, do you see here this and this and this and this and this? And it was like, oh, yeah, no, I do understand. And so I made sure that the car was obviously under my name. So, you know, we bought this, the, the Kia and it was under my name. The Persia was also still under my name at that time. So when we went home, you guys, I honestly had to start relearning how to drive and i know this is so bad obviously driving is like <laughs> riding a bicycle once you know how to do it you can be able to however what i realized was that when i was now driving when i'd get like on the main road i would start to have like those palpitations that someone that is still learning how to drive will get and then also i would like you know when i would be driving like in the um, free state going to Mpumalanga, going to Secunda and stuff. Um, there's a lot of trucks on those roads. And so I don't know, for some reason, I had this huge anxiety when it came to trucks. And so because I had not been driving for such a long time, each time we get on the main road, my ex-husband would be the one to drive. Um, I was very much dependent on him. And so at that moment, you guys, I had to relearn and to be comfortable on the road driving which obviously I did and everything was fine. So that was another step. Now I knew that obviously I'm going to need a car that is going to help me move to Joburg. And that's the car that I'll be able to use when I'm in Joburg. And obviously I did. My care, you guys, it means a lot to me. I wanted to sell it at first. Like I've been so back and forth. When someone wants to buy it, I'm crying just because that car, you guys, like did so much for me um the the plan that i actually had that you know this car is going to move me like it legit did i was driving back and forth to free state and here like um last day december like a crazy person i think i drove back and forth for like four almost five days straight every day like it going up and down and that car like carried me um so i love it so much you guys i feel like i now have just an emotional attachment towards that car 
And so, you know, obviously I had to make sure that I got the car. So other than that, you guys, um, the way that I was basically saving, as I said, I was paying a certain portion of the bills and then every month I'd make sure that I'm saving money. Um, I just, I, I, I started basically looking for accommodations this side. Um, in terms of on the internet, I wanted to gauge like exactly how much, um, you know, is, does the rent go here, um, you know. So I was looking at a lot of stuff, a lot of different factors. Um, what are the stuff that maybe I would need here when I get here? Obviously, like, you know, transport, how much would it cost me to move stuff from Free State to, um, you know, to Joburg? Which part of how thing am I even going to want to leave? I knew that I didn't like like Joburg CBD, Joburg like I just feel like it's very unsafe. Pretoria as well is just not really my kind of chende. I love Midrand, but I was really a bit scared of it. I was like, will I be able to afford and stuff? And so when I started checking, you know, accommodations were not really that bad, but also not cheap. And so I decided that, you know what, I'm going to just go ahead and do it. Um, and I'm going to obviously move. So I did my things gradually, you guys. I did have a full six months to actually sit down and plan everything. It was around September um, after we went to Durban with Mr. B that I basically came home and I sat him down and I said I was asking for a divorce. Um, it obviously did come as a shock to him um, and, you know, obviously tried for us to talk. But, guys, we were fighting so bad. We were fighting so bad. That like at one point we both sat down and looked at each other and were like, like this is not working because he, I feel like he was also just exhausted of the fights and I was also just exhausted of the fights. It was just that um, when someone is used to you being so nice and you rolling over and now you're at a point where you don't do those stuff anymore because you feel this person doesn't deserve them anymore. It's very difficult to have to adjust to that type of a person. And so basically, you guys, that's what I did. The emotional aspect of it, as I said, it was really, really hard. Um, it was also very hard because in terms of like when I was making these plans in my head and like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get the car. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. And the car comes. I'm like, oh, my gosh, am I really going to do this? Am I really going to let go of a nine year um, relationship? Am I ready for this? Like, you know, what are people, not necessarily to say what are people going to say, but like, how will people even look at me? It wasn't, what people are going to say was not a huge factor, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't cross my mind in terms of like, you know, how will ninjas receive the news? Um, You know, what will happen? Like, what will be the future? It was really, really scary, you guys. I don't want to lie. It was very, very scary. And I think that's just a normal thing. It's a normal thing, obviously, once you are about to make a huge decision that is going to impact your life forever, um, it's a huge decision. So obviously, it's going to be something that is very much um, scary. So that did happen to me as well. Um, in that whole process, uh, for me, I'd say that I was so blessed because December, as much as I was saving from, from June, a proper saving from June up until uh, say November, December I did get like a, a lump sum and so that also just you know pushed everything up and so I had the operation and then you know obviously we moved in here like December I think it was the 29th or no I think it was like the 31st the first night we slept here the following day was new year so you know um things ended up working well for me um and so i'm really comfortable here i'm really glad that i made all those decisions back then um because honestly i just feel like if i continued to stay in free state i would not have survived my mental health would have doomed and I feel like I would have just ended up taking my own life, you guys. Like, it was really, really bad. Um, I think of that pain and just associates pain, <laughs> you know. And I remember, like, you know, before I actually moved here, my father was like, um, you know, 
if if like coming home is also an acceptable option um that you know i was welcome to go home and i remember growing up my dad would always be like no if you go to your husband's house don't ever come back to my house you know i cannot uh, um I, I, I allow um you back in my house but the way that things were as i've said you guys i've not even told you guys like the the real real things that were in there my father was the one that ended up saying my child i'm scared for your life like because of how things were actually going and so i feel i, f I felt very comforted in knowing that you know going home was also an option that was acceptable and i knew that you know at this moment like my father would definitely have me back home but you know I also just didn't want to be that woman that would leave her husband's house and have to go to her parents' house. And I know that our situations are different and there are certain people that that's the only option they have. That's also an acceptable option. That's what I wanted to say. To tell you guys the exact same words that my father told me. It's also an acceptable um, option. However, please make sure that that's like the last resort in terms of like do your best to be someone that is financially independent and independent enough that even if anything happens when you leave, you go to your own place. Um, and so obviously I ended up getting a place here in Midrand and I love, 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 love this apartment. So, you know, that's basically what happened, you guys. I didn't tell him, honestly. Um, and I was able to hide it from him. And I think that it was a, a bit easier because of with YouTube, if you work proper, like you do make proper money, you understand? So um, last year I was really um, pushing and I just told myself that I cannot be emotional. I cannot think about the emotional aspect of it all because I do need to make money as well so that I can be able to um, you know, get myself out. And as I said, that was easier for me because my ex-husband is not someone that is violent at all. Um, but if you're in a situation with someone that perhaps maybe is violent, then I feel like it would be a bit um, dangerous, you understand? So moral of this story is that be an ind financially independent woman. Be someone that, you know, make your own money. Like have your own ka-ching, bobo um be independent as i said i don't care if you're happily married i don't care if like your person loves you to the moon and beg guys people change <laughs> people change and so you know if that ever happens to you at least be at a position where you'll be able to support yourself you know i feel like it's easier to just cry for like oh my gosh it's gone and not have to cry for oh my gosh it's gone what will i eat i feel like you know just at least one problem at a time don't ciao anyway ninjas that's how i saved my money um and so yeah i also just like i didn't really cut anything because I don't know, like I didn't, didn't cut anything off in terms of like the expenses other than he was not just paying other bills and he was paying like the more expensive bills. Um, in free state, it's like farms, you guys. So you can't even waste money. I feel like it would have been a lot difficult if I was staying in Joburg. Like there, you don't even get fast foods like that. The closest McDonald's is like 60, almost 60 kilometers. So you don't really waste a lot of money when it comes to stuff like that. But I was able to, you know, obviously save and I was able to comfortably move. So yeah, that's basically what happened. Being an in, a financially independent woman, a woman that makes her own money saved my life, in all honesty. Because I feel like if it was a matter of I didn't have money, I didn't have any way to go, I might have been forced to have to stay in a situation even though I knew that I was miserable and I was not happy. Which is why when Mugai was like, quit your job, I was like, uh, the hell I will. <laughs> it's just not happening. Don't try and prove you love someone by screwing yourself okay if someone is like prove to me that you love me by quitting your job then you should tell them prove to me you love me by you know not having a problem with me working um i'm telling you guys like be a woman that is financially independent if you're quitting your job have a successful business running um have something that is 
giving you an income. You can't just sit like a potato. Like, don't do it. Don't do it. Married or not, is someone that is financially independent. And it's not you trying to be a man. It's not you trying to be anything. I'm telling you guys, it may save your life one day. Because even if your husband doesn't change, he doesn't belong to you. He belongs to Jesus. Not in the way of Abo you guys some of you guys out there that are basile what i mean is that if god decides to take what's his since you're left in this planet without a job without a source of income and without a way of how you provide even for your kids so it's very important to be somebody that is financially independent okay Anyway, ninjas, that's basically the advice that I just wanted to give you guys. If you have any questions, like, or any other video that you guys would want to talk about when it comes to this stuff, you can go ahead and, and say, I feel like maybe I should do a Q&A on this. So go and follow me on Instagram. It's at boldly or me. Um, and um, in my stories, I will basically do a question and then I'll get the questions and then i will give you guys the answers so basically that's it my ninjas i know i was brewing a lot today i had a lot of cool drink which is so bad for me i don't know why but anyway ninjas i love you guys so much don't forget thumbs up this video and versus share um stay blessed and i'll see you guys in my next upload bye ninjas would you like to start a new youtube channel but you have no idea where to start or you already have one but it's not going well and you wish you could get someone give you some personal advice well who better than someone with over a hundred thousand subscribers i'm giving those services for a small fee of course the details will be on the screen somewhere here so make sure that you follow them and say hello to a new successful youtube channel now let's go back to the video chat <laughs>